Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bifear. Um, uh, wow. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna get this bit out of the way first. If you want nothing to do with spoilers for the final shape, you need to get off the internet right now. If my video is somehow the first thing you're seeing on this and you've seen nothing else, and you want zero spoilers, and I really do mean zero spoilers to do with the final shape, uh, I will leave you with this tidbit. It looks good, but you need to find a rock to hide under right now. From here on out, we're going to be discussing what was revealed in the quick 30-minute developer gameplay preview that just aired on Twitch moments ago. Th there's a lot. Like, like there's a seriously a lot, a lot. So, yeah, uh, buckle in. This is very much hot takes, but also I wanted to discuss some of the story and lore implications for all of this. So, with all of that said, let's dive in with the very first thing we see, which is a confrontation in the old tower within the heart of the Traveler itself. And immediately, one might notice that the UI is a little bit weird. And there is a very good reason for that. This is what Bungie is calling prismatic. This is a combination of both light and darkness in one subclass. The light and the dark being used together like this can allow you to ultimately fill two different meters. When you fill them both, you gain transcendence. And when you have that, it's a pure synergy of both light and dark. And you can combo the elements that you have in your kit together for some incredible new effects. To put it really bluntly, transcendence is like nothing we've ever seen. Prismatic is like nothing we've ever seen. And it is stunning to see this on the front lines of Final Shape because... I don't know what we were all expecting. New light supers, sure. Maybe we were expecting a whole new dark subclass. This is just, I mean, it's a whole new open door worth of combos. There is some ridiculous stuff you are gonna be able to do with this. This new set of abilities, by the way, was immediately being used in a fight against a new enemy race. This is not the Taken 2.0. This is an entirely new enemy race that we are finally getting in the final shape and they are known as the Dread. I'll go over a bit more about the Dread in just a moment, but for context, the Subjugators and the Tormentors that we saw, they are members of the Dread. They are two of the upper echelons of that particular new enemy race, or faction, I suppose, because this is made of the Witness, and it is a Witness-based faction. There are going to be other enemy races that we face inside the Pale Heart, and whether that's based on our own recollection and memory of things, or whether it's the Witness's own fighting forces isn't clear. The point is this. The other enemies that I've seen inside based on that trailer are the Hive, the Taken, and the Cabal. So we have plenty of stuff going on with those enemies, as well as an entirely new enemy race. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the Dread. The Dread have quite a few different combatants, and they are kind of unlike anything we've ever seen before. First of all, we have the Grim, which are small flying gremlins of a sort. They're called the Bat with a Gun by the Bungie employees in the trailer. They look quite mobile, they are a swarm enemy for sure, and they have not only a ranged weapon attack that moves in a non-hitscan fashion, but also they have a screech attack. If you are hit by the screech, you are slowed and you are suppressed. Next up, there are Husks. These are melee enemies, bladed arms. They'll approach you very quickly. They are high damage rushdown enemies. And if a Husk dies, it has a nasty surprise spawned from it, called a Geist. This is a small flyer that seeks you and tries to detonate on top of you. It's really gnarly looking. These things look like they may be one of the more dangerous enemies to go up against. Next, we have the Weaver and the Attendant. Kind of mirrors and reflections of each other. These are scions that have been corrupted by the Witness with the powers of Stasis and Strand. Attendants are apparently the ones with Stasis powers, based on the fact that Weavers were shown off and they're the ones with Strand powers. Weavers have the ability to pull you towards them using a wave of Strand energy, and Attendants, based on the fact that they have Stasis powers, will probably have the ability to freeze or slow you. So with a group of these, it's not just about a ranged firing line, but also it's about the ability to slow you down and suppress you. Also, they are supposedly created from Corrupted Scions, which tells us a whole lot about what the Witness was doing with all of the Scion Rebels that were previously being led by Eurix. It promised them some kind of salvation, and unfortunately it looks like this is what it might have been thinking of. If this is going to impact future storylines, expect this to be a prime reason for any of the actions going forward. 
I imagine there might be a sizable contingent of Scions who are much more happy to side with Keitel now, based on just this. And of course, the two big enemies that we have seen in the promotional stuff so far are, of course, the Subjugators, who are based on Rolk, the first disciple of the Witness, and the Tormentors, who seem to be based on Nezarek. They are both confirmed to be members of the Dread, and they are some that we've seen early in the franchise and just never had the confirmation that they indeed were members of the Dread proper. So that's pretty exciting all on its own. There is a lot more that, needless to say, we have to go through in this, and I'm going to do a proper full breakdown of things if it requires more of it after I've looked through this footage. That being said, I do want to point out a few things immediately. First of all, in this trailer for the final shape, somewhere in between, there is a unrecognizable voice here. Take this power, Guardian. Be brave in dark places. For we are the light of hope. Maybe people recognize who this character's from, and maybe I'm just not recognizing it off the bat. That's intriguing for a few possibilities. It deciding to call us the Light of Hope? Uh, that's a big deal. I believe that if this is one of the characters that is found within the Pale Heart of the Traveler, we could be listening to the voice of someone core to the story that we haven't met yet. And uh, if you've read up on the lore, it's possible that this might be the voice of the Gardener, or whatever the voice of the Traveler truly is. Again, that's all speculative, I don't want to confirm anything there just yet. But it's strange and distorted, and it's not quite clear what's going on. So, let's keep that in mind. We don't know who that voice is from, and it could be from someone important. And, also, there is this obvious note that I need to make, which is about prismatic and the idea of transcendence. This is probably going to be core to the final shape itself. This battle of light and dark, this ability to transcend and use the powers of both, this is ultimately what the Witness was seeking, a symbiosis, a synergy of both, so that it could become the ultimate master of the universe and create a place where there was no suffering because there was no growth, there was no change, and it simply was as it was. That's what the Witness believes will allow it to bring about the final shape. But us having both light and dark powers and now being able to combine them properly, even having the note that that's transcendence, that in itself presents our own idea for what the final shape might be. I think this is something that we've ultimately been moving towards for a very long time, but it also has massive story ramifications. The very existence of transcendence puts in play the idea again of the gardener and the winnower. And again, it's not clear if this is in fact real or whether it is purely interpretation of the religious scripture of the witness and the precursors that came before it, thus creating some propaganda. But I will, for the moment, entertain the idea because I'm going to be making videos on that later anyway, and I think it's worth talking about. If we have indeed achieved transcendence because of the synergy of light and dark, and if the story from Unveiling about the Gardener and the Winnower is true, then we have started a new chapter to reality itself. You see, in the original story from way back when, the Gardener and the Winnower were basically at odds because of the simple idea that the consistent pattern, this shape that would always emerge from the flower game that they were playing, was always present in the universe and that nothing new would grow. This pattern is not something that is presented by the Guardians, it's something that's instead presented by what the Witness might interpret as the final shape, what the Hive might interpret as the sword logic. In the universe, there was only space for strength to truly grow into something stable, and the Gardener supposedly despised this idea, and so decided to subvert the rules so that there was space for growth. Regardless of whether that's true or not, this might be the Gardener's final proof, the proof that there is indeed something outside of that pattern. And we're it, if that is the case. Because it is no longer purely a thing of light, it is no longer a pure thing of darkness, it is both manifest. The important thing to remember about this as well is that having the power of light and dark isn't just powerful because of what it represents if unveiling turns out to be a little closer to the truth than fiction, but it's also because of the fact that we can do, to an extent, what the Witness planned to do. We have the ability to master both the physical and the unseen universe. We are able to affect both formless and form. 
we are going to have power unrivaled in Destiny's universe, and what we do with that power is going to be an incredibly important question. Assuming that we walk away and the Witness is defeated, which is in all likelihood what's going to happen, Guardians are now going to be a power unto themselves, something that the universe is going to have to reckon with, and something that shall change the nature of everything to do with Destiny's story going forward. We will walk out of the Traveler, and we will have this power, and I imagine that that is going to bring monumental changes to the whole universe of Destiny. This is going to change the way that the Vex interact with us, because they will potentially see an entire new reason to fight or flee from us. They will need to recalculate who they are and what they do based on everything that they require in order to survive in their calculations. The Cabal will now have mighty allies at their side to retake Torah Bartle. The Elixni will now stand defended within the last city, or will ultimately sit and see that we can use both light and dark, and might even achieve that peace for themselves if they follow in our footsteps. And as for the Hive, Lord forbid that Savathun and Zivor Wrath should take a hint from what we're doing. The combination of light and dark that we achieve might inspire them to new camaraderie, or might force them into ultimate submission, as being unable to master both will be their destiny forever. I don't know which is which, I don't know what's what, but I will say this. This changes everything. The ability to wield light and darkness as one, together, transcended, means massive change. Destiny is not going to be the same after this. And as Luke Smith was pointing out at the very beginning, whilst the ten-year saga that Destiny began with may be coming to an end, the story of Destiny 2, and Destiny generally, is not over. What we'll do next? Where we'll go next? Who knows? That's all from me for the moment. I'm going to jump into Into the Light, I'm going to jump in and do some whisper runs, and I'm going to see what's happening in the world of Destiny. But if you enjoyed this video, and if you're excited for the final shape, do me a solid favor. The first thing is this, not really for me, but for everybody else. If there is someone who's going in completely unspoiled, make sure it stays that way. Don't spread spoilers on the internet without a warning like you have seen on this video. And also, of course, remember to like this video and to comment and hit subscribe if you're interested in more Destiny. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Know that your viewership as always has been quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Arodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.